Top of the morning to you. What do you know about the grass-fed greenhouse? So Jim and I think is kind of onto something here. Really cool. Let him show you, tell you what he's been doing. So hold tight. All right, Jim, tell us what's growing on over here. Welcome to the grass-fed greenhouse. Whoa, where'd you read about this one? That was one of those, you know, things that happened in the mowing field. And I said, wow, what if I just did that instead of like Casey does, bring all the compost in, have this perfect thing, and you know, plant your um, low tunnel in that. So this caterpillar, I decided last year in um, August that I wanted one. So I ordered two from Farmer's Friend. I got free shipping by ordering two uh, 50 foot by 14s, and they came and I put them up. And in August, I built a bed that's behind you. Okay, so it looks like so this right here was built like this last August. What? Yep. Okay, and then this one um, was built six weeks ago. So all last year I grew winter stuff in where that is, right? Inside the house. And then as I came up here in May, you know, everything was out of there. I mulched it with more hay and then planted everything that's in there. I hope to give you a picture of how small that is. And right now, you know, a bed that's less than, you know, a year old on um, pure um, bedrock underneath, nine inches underneath its bedrock, you know, really bad soil. It's got nine foot tall corn. It's incredible. That's the power of a sheet mulch. So this is pretty much a, a sheet mulch in place underneath a, a caterpillar tunnel. So everybody watching and wondering, like you said, you sheet mulch. So you didn't till this, you didn't cardboard this by sheet mulch. What was your sheet mulch? Um, let's go here and I can kind of maybe give you an idea. <clears throat> like how did you stop this crazy grass, Jim? You know, and it's amazing because this has built only six months ago. Six months? Yeah. Oh no, six weeks. Excuse me, six weeks. Six weeks? Six weeks ago. Where are all the weeds? Where's all the grass? Well, the grass, yeah. So, well, here it is, you see? But so right here, what I did is I piled, let's pretend this grass was here. I would have mowed it, right? So mow all that off, let it sit there, then put that much seaweed uh, gathered locally right off the beach, okay? And then it was time to clean the goat, the goat uh, barn. So there is, you know, probably as I spread it out, I don't know, 40 or 50 wheelbarrows full of goat barn cleanings, right? So that is hay that they don't eat, urine and goat poop, which is really rich and it's half composted at the time. Goat manure is really, um, easy on a garden it's not so hot okay and then imagine putting on top of the goat manure now I'm putting you know 12 to 18 inches of grass or hay right I mean it, it's fluffy so you know it, within five or six days it's probably down to nine inches just with the weight and then I topped it with this tide mill compost right so this is a really unique compost that they make um, it has all the chicken processing waste. So all the feathers, all the organ meat that they don't sell, and then the bones. So it's really rich in minerals because of the organ meat. And I found a lot of leafy greens do unbelievable on that. So I am, that's the only input that I'm bringing in. And that's only like an inch thick on top of the grass, right? And then so when I went to plant this, I just made a little hole in the, um, two inches of compost or one inch of compost and put a little more in around the soil block just so it had something to work with um, and then planted it. And then the tomatoes were in four inch blocks, right? And so they had a little bigger, like maybe a one gallon pot worth of that. And you know, they're thriving. They, you know, on that and look what's happened to the sheet mulch. Okay, so there is the side mill compost. Okay, right, so that deep, there's the grass, right? And so we'll look at the plants right there. And I'll bet you $100 the roots are coming over here. And so there's the deeper compost. But I mean, they're just thriving. Wow. And it's all turning into 
good rich soil. So what I'm doing here with this grass fed greenhouse is establishing beds. And as I'm increasing the fertility, I'm getting huge crops. So last year I got a bunch of cold season crops, um, you know, turnips, um, lots of spinach, arugula, um, wasabi arugula. She ate that until it got too dark in November. And then from there on, um, when I put it in the spring, we put all that in there and we're gonna get all the corn. We'll talk about that greenhouse more, but corn, squash, and beans is coming out of that. And then when I'm about to leave, that's gonna get all planted to garlic and it's really rich. So three crops with no waiting to get going. Wow. And then I might move this back next, you know, the same thing as this year. I'll move that back with warm season or cool season crops that I want to protect or I might move it back somewhere else and establish another bed but again we get to the the point where I can't cut enough hay to feed the soil life so that's the limiting factor and nothing wrong with just saying oh that's good enough I'm feeding you know 30 or 40 families up here plus us and getting enough cash to take care of our needs and Jim you moved this whole greenhouse one piece yeah, that was cool. It was like an Amish thing. So, so what you're seeing on the side rail there is the roll-up sides. We'll see that on the front greenhouse. And I just bought some cross connectors, the same thing that puts the, um, I can't remember what they call it, the ridge pole. Yeah, the ridge pole what connects out. I just bought those and then connected the roll-up sides minus the plastic. So I took the plastic off, connected the roll-up poles really tightly. And then we had, I think, seven, no, six people on each side, a couple kids too, I mean. And then we just lifted it up. It's on rebar. And that's, you'll see, I got that mark. So it's on rebar that's like 12 inches out of the ground. And we walked it down and we all, I kind of, I did really good on getting the rebar in the right place. That was kind of a challenge. But then we just set it back on the rebar. And, you know, in three weeks, I'm going to put the plastic back on. These tomatoes will go until December. And then I'll get some more crops in here. Spinach, you know, more turnips. Maybe leave the chard. Um, Cold weather crops. Yeah. Okay. That'll go through until it gets too dark for it to, you know, because as soon as we get into late November, it's less than 10 hours of sunlight and things won't grow. But whatever is already present in growth, you can harvest that. It'll keep it. You could harvest that, you know, six weeks later after it stops growing and still, you know, be able to eat it, but it won't regrow. All right. So that's a new grass fed greenhouse. Let's look at the old one. So this is six weeks. The old one is like, wasn't it a month or a year yesterday? That was no, it was, it was actually three months ago yesterday that I planted this. Three inside. months ago yesterday you planted it. Yeah. I gotcha. Okay. That's the power of long days. Look at the amount of growth in three months. Wow. So, I mean, and there is a difference. So, see how tall this corn is? See, the corn over there is probably two foot shorter, and it's the same soil block. I just, I saved extras in case these got ruined for some reason and then planted them when these are good. Wow. And then we intermix the squash. So, so in the middle is a butter cup and then there's butter nuts here. Okay, and you're seeing that's the rebar from the old greenhouse. Oh, so if you want to put yeah. it back in the spot. Right. Do you think you'll put it back here? I think I might. At least I got the option. You know, and this is putting on a lace growth of you know that's that baby butternut I love that one it doesn't get huge like the waltham um, and they're really really sweet um, and um, colorful and then there's so there's the butternuts the buttercups and then the delicatas and I've never seen a delicata this big Oh, it's the biggest one yet I bet that's a two and a half pounder in I mean, the first year greenhouse yeah wow with all this abundance it's crawling out of here jim yeah and i almost wish i had sweet corn in here wow what kind of corn is this for everybody so this is a japanese hullus that they've been growing for a few years and like for popcorn hullus popcorn excuse me um and um so i'm hoping to find a niche market on it and you know sell it in small quantities because it's really nice popcorn but i mean food value it's probably not the best use of crop space sweet corn might be but See, it's unprotected so we could have coons i'm surprised you know three years ago the kids were camped out in that garden which we'll look at next um with a gun to keep the porcupines out wow. 
because they, I mean, they'll come in and take one bite out of a squash, go to the next one, go to the next one, go to the next one. Luckily, we got a good dog and a new puppy that have been keeping. I've never seen a coon on the property. I've seen tracks. So they're the ones that are terrible on the corn. So the scent has really been helping with the presence out here. Mm -hmm. Is this leftover grass? Yeah, I didn't get to, you know, spread it. A part of me is wanting to spread it as the squash ran. On the edge. You know, what I found at Lamb Cove was sometimes they got a lot of fertility out of the grass by putting their, you know, every time they run, they'll put a node down. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, it's not showing very good here, but, you know, each node, they can actually put a root down into the soil and actually get fertility as they're running. Um, and that wouldn't happen as likely in the corn. I mean, in the... So in if the we would have built that edge up, kind of like the, the edge effect, then, yep. yeah, it would have really helped. I got you. But it was, you know, my plan here really worked out good. The idea is when I got, I barely got the greenhouse off before the corn tipped it. And then as soon as I opened it up, then the squash could run. Nice. You know, I had to kind of tuck the squash in as we moved the house so we weren't stepping on it. But as soon as we got it moved, they've been running. Well, uh, will this corn be ready to take to Florida with you? Yep. You can be taking some popping corn with you? Yep. And some squash this year. And some squash. And some apples. And some apples and some onions and a lot of garlic and a lot of blueberries. And a lot of potatoes. Yay! Jim, you're doing good. You're getting back to the old self here. Abundance like again. Abundance. I love yeah. feeling abundance. And you can give things away if you feel abundant. I like it. All right, grass-fed greenhouse. Yeah. All right, so the grass-fed greenhouse, that was pretty cool. Love what Jim has to share here. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button. If you wanna see more of Jim and our tour while we're here in Maine, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that bell to stay notified, and most importantly, get out there and pound dirt.